Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Western Bulldogs podcast. Although I don't know if they want to put their name to this one just yet, but it's Happy Hour, and it's sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. They pay the bills, so that's to everyone listening right now, including the guests, just to keep it a little bit clean. Um, it is our great pleasure... Yeah, it's our great pleasure to yeah. welcome a former Bulldog and, for a brief period, a Gold Coast son, Seaford's favourite son, but Western Bulldog royalty, Jared Grant. Jared, welcome to Happy Hour. What have you got to say for yourself? Guys, it's great to be here. It's great to be back on board, just ready for my player <laughs> photo for the year. Let's get into it. <laughs> It, uh, is uh, that what it is? It, like, it looks, it's either a passport photo or a or a um or a <laughs> I hope. How's me hair at the moment, Bob? You happy with me hair? It, I gotta say, the hair is looking pretty pretty nice. Yeah, well, I got over the eight years of coming in and you telling me to get a haircut, so I'm just going out. <laughs> of I was just asking the bonk before. I was. You guys had a couple of years together as teammates, you and the Bond? Yeah, basically, um, he came in and that was basically the end of me on the half-forward flank. Um, <laughs> and then he progressed into the midfield. So, yeah, not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I might have helped, but clearly not there, mate. I thought I might have been able to add something, but um, you went on to bigger and better things. Didn't you two have a... A sort of connection via the kindred spirit of the dice when you two sort of <laughs> is that right? Did you did you come and do that with me, Bon? I think you 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 were my mentor in the end when it came to the dice because you handed it on to me. So well, that's Jared, how it well, you, 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 Jared yeah, you need to ex you need to explain to people watching and listening about yeah. the dice and the role of the dice master at the Bulldogs. Well, can we go into the Matthew Boyd story about the dice, or? Well, I don't but know anyway. what story is. I'm just, maybe just tell the basics of how the how the actual <laughs> thing works, and then you can branch off into your more risque material. I don't think we want to go down that path. But uh, yeah, the dice was the uh, the punishment uh, dice was created. Uh, I think early days when I was there, um, Moz used to do it, but um, Moz is quite a boring personality, so you know you need to spice it up a little bit. Um, you know, those dour defenders, they just need a bit of spunk about them. So, um, tell the six... people what the dice is, mate. <laughs> they don't know what it is. <laughs> Sorry, mate. The six numbers on the on the dice, you, you've got to roll if you've done something incorrect or um, a punishment for not wearing like a uniform. Small, small misdemeanors, like late for physio, left your towel on the floor, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you were very anal about not being allowed to use your phone when you're on the physio table. Um, Little misdemeanors like that. Um, so then there was six, obviously, punishments. Um, and Acker always rolled to dye his hair. So he was easily uh, accompanied there. But um, <laughs> so that's, so that's what it was. Yet, yet you rolled the dice and there was... So each number represented six different punishments, like shave your head, um, what were they like? Um, dress up in a woofer suit, all sort of weird or eat... A, Table cinnamon, spoons. yeah, you had the cinnamon or, or the chili, or you, yep. could, or you could pay your way out and the money would go. No, down. no, and uh, what, uh, what was, we always used to chant, we want double or nothing. What was the chant? Oh, yeah, yeah that was um, two, four, six, uh, yeah, two, four, six. Yeah, two, four, six. That was if you, if you rolled a six, <laughs> I yep. remember if you rolled a six, then it was double or nothing, and then it was, yep, roll again, two, four, six yep. meant you got. You had double the penalty, and that's what yeah, the, the, the mob for? wanted. Two, four, six. Mad Monday. Yeah. Mad Monday got more money. <laughs> that's yeah, right. That's correct. Right. Yep. Um, how are you, man? What are you up to? What's going on? What, what are you doing well, these days? I wouldn't be taking on the double or nothing. That's for sure at the moment. <laughs> but um, just working, just working my uh, my way as um. A, I've taken after the force. I'm doing a bit of labouring at the moment. Um, really? I'm working yeah. for an electrician company who basically um, helps all the telecommunications for Optus and makes sure they're all working in Victoria. So, yeah, right. A few different roles and whatnot. Something I never thought I'd be doing, but here we are. Were you? Was there a brief, brief flirtation with the uh, with the world of real estate? Yes, I'm curious about this too. <laughs> 
Oh, we'll get on to you, Bob. Don't worry. But um, the uh, yeah, I dabbled in I dabbled in the real estate venture for about I think I did about eighteen, maybe not eighteen, bit under that months. But um, oh, to be honest with you, it's uh, it's a great job. Um, I don't think people understand the hours that actually go into it because you're working eight till five, and um, to be in front of people and talking to them about putting their house for sale or whatnot obviously needs to occur after work hours. So. Long and strenuous hours and then Saturday work um, into going down to Frankston Park and putting on a clinic. Uh, I didn't have a lot of life <laughs> and I thought I'd change things up a little bit. Have you been playing footy? Are you, are you, like if, if we weren't in quarantine at the moment, would you be having a kick? Yeah, I'm still playing for the Frankston Bombers, who was my um, local under-18s club. Um, just plodding around there. Um, they've got challenges at the moment for, you know, Bont would know more about, but the team's got, you know, who's running what. Um, I put up a massive six kilometres for the week last week. It was magnificent. Oh. So, you and G, Bont was fascinated with that, um, yeah. the friendship there. And I, I, describe it as an unorthodox friendship. How would you describe oh. it? Oh, professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Look, we basically, I wouldn't say we went a day without sledging each other. Um, <laughs> and the Foss, he didn't take it very well, but he, you know, he'd always have his angry eyebrows on and he'd raise his eyes a little <laughs> bit wider. Um, he didn't like people getting under his skin, but um, I found many ways to get under it. Did uh, So you came up with, you, you nicknamed him Fossil, <laughs> but Bond but bon was wanting to know the... Um, who came up with the nickname Microphone Head for you? Uh, I think it was Triple Lamb. I think um, yeah. I'm a bit of a favourite down there. And um, yeah. I think when I had it shaved, which you used to like, because you used to say I look bigger. So I went from 75 kilos to 80 when I shaved my head, apparently. <laughs> when you used to let it grow, it, like, it, made, it looked, made you look skinnier and skinnier. <laughs> Okay, coming from a bloke who calls himself a half-forward flanker who's wearing a hat, come on now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? I just look I after see, the fellow. I was always trying to look out for you. I want to see your hair in its current flowing oh, locks. Okay. Are right, you ready? Because it's real long. It's really long. Oh. And, it, and it's long at the back. It's quite... It's quite mullety and it's mm. quite it's quite grey. It's quite it's a mm. tribute to Foss. Foss looked yes, luck. He looked no good when I interviewed him. Sorry about the language, but we're about, we're allowed to go uncut on my version. But um, <laughs> apparently, so looking at yourself now, Bob, and you know you coming in and telling me to get a haircut, mate, have a look in the mirror. Hey, we're in mm. isolation. We're in quarantine. Justine would be good. filthy. It's not. No, yeah, she's not a massive rat for the mullet. It's been I had a few days of a mustache. That that wasn't popular either. How are you enjoying Media Street? How are you enjoying the mic on mic stuff? Uh the podcasting's a bit of fun. Just um it's good to have a laugh and um you know, mine's I'm pretty lighthearted and get the piss taken out of me, so I'm having a crack back at a few. Um, <laughs> um it's just good to talk some footy and um, you know, stay occupied and, and have a bit of a laugh, to be honest. Bond made the observation, and he can, he can speak for himself, but you were always, um, like, for your, you, you call yourself lighthearted, and you are. You're a, a classic larrikin in lots of ways, but you always had a really sharp eye on um, the game and the tactical side mm. of footy. Is that, is that something you've still got a passion for and, and has, a, has an outlet in your, in your footy career down there? Um, yes and no. Um, I'm not a big believer in local footy playing coaches. Um, not to say it doesn't work, but um, I like to focus my energy on playing um, whilst I'm playing. Um, going down the coaching avenue, look, I help out our coach um, a fair bit in terms of tactics and what we're doing and what we're doing in the game. Um, you know, my, my next path... Um, you know, blokes like Dustin Fletcher and myself can play probably 400 games. So I'm hoping I've got a few years left in me. How's your form been before, before all the isolation? Well, your brother coaches down this way or was, so you'd probably have yeah. a little bit of an eye on me. But 
It's it's not great. I led the goal kicking for us, but it's still not great. Nice. The shank. Well, I just want to ask one more, Bont, and then you can have a go. Yep. But one of my favourite memories of our time playing together at the Bulldogs was if I was playing in the back line and if you were having one of your on days and you were running a muck in the forward line, you kicked a lot of your goals around your body, sort of snaps, and you'd kick it, and I would see the finger go out before <laughs> before the crowd realised it was a goal. Like I could see it again. I've seen the finger. I'd see the finger. Then there was a heartbeat of silence, and then there and then there was the big roar, and an old shout <laughs> take off for the crowd. <laughs> Is is there a question here, or what? What is, is this? A statement? <laughs> I can I can end this podcast whenever I want. Man. This this may never go to air. I was thinking, no, do you still do that? Do you still show the finger after a goal down in Mornington Peninsula or wherever wherever the hell you? Don't playing? worry, don't worry about Andy getting the sack. You're a chance to get done <laughs> yeah. first. Um, do I give the finger? Um, well, there's normally about four people in their cars, so there's not really anyone. That's, <laughs> that's it. You're doing a good job once again of getting under. I, I typically always remember you, as you like you mentioned, Gia, um, Bob, clearly, but I'd always heard stories about how you managed to get under Barry Hall's skin as well a fair bit. I wasn't there at the time Barry was, but um, I'm keen to hear some insight on you know that relationship. How you blokes got along? Did he pick on you, or were you just were you just always at him? Uh, I think he had somewhat of a respect for me. He used to call me Needle <laughs> in re- in reference to my body shape. You <laughs> so always called me Needle. Um, I did a few gym sessions with him, which was quite eye opening. Um, yeah. I was doing my <laughs> max my max sets on his warm up. Um, uh, the the one thing about Baz was, um, and Bob, you probably agree, was when it was time to train in the gym or on the actual field, um, he was a hundred percent committed and just into it. Um, and as soon as you know the the time had stopped where we were training or, or being serious, um, he was as big a larrikin as there was, and it was probably something I took away from my years with him as to. Um, you know, train um, hard and 100, percent but once you you know are in the locker rooms to enjoy yourself and have a bit of fun. Um, the one thing I'd I'd advise is um, when you ask him to take a shot on footy trip and he refuses it, don't throw vodka into his eyes. Um, he didn't, like it. <laughs> yeah. didn't, didn't take too one, kindly to that. Hey, can, one you, other, can you remember? Oh, sorry, you go, Bob. Yeah, I was going to say there's one other part to it that I only ever saw a photo of, but a particular prank that I think he played on you at some point when. Um, you were together. Can you just indulge everyone? I know the story a little bit, but I'm keen to hear from your perspective how it unfolded. Is the boxing ring still in in the uh, the dogs complex? It's not. It's not anymore. Um, too many blokes were getting, so they had to. Yeah, they had to pull the pin on it. Put your hands up. <laughs> Bob, were you there the day, Bob, that Paddy Bears Bremi got knocked out and just woke up and wanted to kill everyone? <laughs> Back in Sharp Hill and Addis, yeah. Dylan Addison. But, uh, back to me story. Well, my, your story, Bond. Um, there used to be a <laughs> boxing ring within the the confines there at the uh, Whitten Oval, um, and I was being the professional and getting my massage. Didn't have my phone out because I was um, engaging in conversation, if you like, with the masseuse, Bob. And oh, um, I was just, uh, yeah, really deep in conversation about something that I wouldn't even know what I was talking about. And um, anyway, I finished my 30-minute massage, came out, and my, at the time, VZ Commodore, my first car or whatever had been, uh, my keys were gone from my locker. It had then been put into the boxing ring, which had been disabled in 30 minutes and put into the ring, and then the boxing ring <laughs> was done back up. So, yeah, at 4.30 after your, your big day and you've just had a rub and you're feeling great, um, to have to take the boxing <laughs> ring down and put it back up um, wasn't wasn't ideal. It was good, though. It was a good prankster. That that was the all-time <laughs> bet. I mean, there's been a lot of pranks in a lot of footy clubs. That's the best one I've ever seen. But you, the way you, When you were stood there and you were looking at your car in the ring and you had it... <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you usually were pretty quick with a reply and you sort of sat there like, we're all like, how, how did that happen? We, didn't, <laughs> we couldn't all work it out. Was there a response? Did you return serve or was it too too big an ask? 
Uh, nah, I don't think I ever got him. He was pretty good on the. Yeah. He was pretty witty and, and good with the pranks. Um, he used to love Target and Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Bond, hey Bond, should we give um should we give Jared the uh the group hug treatment? Yeah, let's do it. Do you want to kick us off? <laughs> yeah, I'll kick you off. So, Jared, what we do here because you know in these times of isolation and quarantine, we we can't physically you know hug one another. So what we like to do is with a couple of questions each, we like to like put our virtual arms around you just with a couple of nice little questions. You know, mm. you up for that? Oh, I'm pumped. <laughs> I can see. I can see. No one, no one gets excited quite like old Jared here. Mm, um, there it is. Right. So the, the the footy club, <laughs> the footy club put out a video Wasn't during the week right. of uh, of one of your sort of uh, trademark goals against the Pies, I think, and it it took off like uh, it went viral. It went really viral, and it got me thinking about like what do we think of like what's the um what's the catchphrase. To sort of that covers Jared Grant. So I've got a multiple choice question for you. Which which captures you <laughs> the best? Is it cult hero, misunderstood, icon, or spindle shanks? <laughs> Is there an E, all of the above? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll put you down for I'll put you down for E all of the above. Well done. Very good. Very nice. An easy one to start. Um, this one's pretty uh, oh, half volley outside off. Your favourite favourite football memories, mate? Uh, Bont, first of all, I reckon that some new curtains would go nicely. Um, <laughs> and oh, You're the first person. To, I've been waiting for that. Bob hasn't had the courage to say it. No one has. I'm back home with the folks. I'll, let, I'll, give, I'll, give, them, I'll give them the feedback. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, granny, you've upset Mr. and Mrs. Bond and Pally now. Mm. Um, favorite memory. Um, oh, to, there's nothing like running out. Um, although we lost the prelims for those few years, there's, there's nothing like it's indescribable running out to eighty thousand. Um, sorry, eighty thousand. Obviously, you've run out to a, a, a grand final day, but. It's indescribable, that feeling. Um, people will never be able to understand what it's like unless they're playing in that game. So that'd be one. Also, the VFL Premiership that we won in, I think it was 2013 or 14, was probably, I mean, in terms of a highlight, that's the only Premiership I've got to my name. So um, that yeah. would be a couple of things um, that, that come to mind in terms of my day at the Dogs. Yep. Very nicely done. They're almost sort of... Yeah. A bit misty eyed, a bit sort of nostalgic there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I asked the Foss if there's a little bit of room on the VFL list and he, he wasn't about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, here's mine. Um, the three of us are having a nice little chat tonight. It's been really lovely. I've really enjoyed our chat so far. But I, I checked a few statistics and something sort of jumped out at me. Two of the three of us have kicked six goals against the Bombers. One hasn't. Do you know who the one who hasn't, Jared? I thought you were going to go with um, all of us average under one tackle a game. But um, <laughs> uh, we all know the good players. The good players don't tackle. We don't need to. I kicked. Uh, I kicked six on Mick Hurley, and he's on eight hundred a year at the moment, and I'm a labourer. Um, <laughs> Though so maybe the blokes that have kicked six have probably got worse futures. Yeah, I think you might be right. you got a bit of work to do there, Bont. You need six against the Bombers. But the difference is I can add a yet to mine, whereas you two blokes, Ooh. Co- it's nice and cosy in media world. Oh, that nice is and cozy. Cold. That's Sorry. Cold, Sorry. Top that, <laughs> Murphy. Jeez. <laughs> That's, hey, there was one for you oh. as well, mate. Yeah, it, it was. Um, but he's still playing. Uh, my final one's probably more just for um, what you got planned, sort of future-wise. What's you know, what's the one thing you sort of really want to sort of get out of or do, or you've got sort of a, a plan to to tick off sort of in the next sort of few years for I guess for Jared Grant in sort of life after football now. Yep. Yeah. Um... I'm pretty keen on um, starting a little bit of a property portfolio at the moment, so doing a fair bit of research and 
um, work to head towards that and, and purchase an, another home at, this, at the moment down the Mornington Peninsula way. So um, they're probably my short-term goals. Um, Footy-wise, just continuing to play and get as much out of your body as you can. Um, call the call time when it's the right time. Don't go on too long like some do. Um, oh, hello, another one. Is that another one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he doesn't miss. He does not miss much. I, I will. I will uh, say. I've just got one last one just to finish. So you know, obviously, Here we go. when you when you're trying to get, you know, I know how hard it is. Bont, Bont and I know how hard it is when you're trying to get a project up in the air. Um, and you know, and the, the mic on mic is is that boat for you at the moment. Um, just to give the ratings a little boost along first. Who who would you who are you going to get first out of Bont and I? Um, Long dramatic pause. <laughs> dramatic pause. <laughs> no, there's no no feelings will be hurt here. I promise you, there will be no feelings. Uh, uh, I, I don't mean, even know. I don't even know what I want the answer to be. To be honest, <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm looking I'm more towards. Boring. I'm looking more towards a, a Will Minston type. I just think you guys are a bit bland. <laughs> Great answer. That would Great. that would be interesting. I would that, yeah. I'd probably subscribe. Yeah, yeah many have... philosophies on life. Yeah, that would be <laughs> that, would, that would definitely be something worth um, tuning into. Hey, mate, um, can I say thank you for for coming on Happy Hour? Great to see your face. Um, great to share a few gags. I know it's a tough time for lots of lots of people, but sounds like um, you're doing some good things with the shovel. Uh, but sincerely, um, you know, I, I loved our time together, and I know Bond did as well. I loved our time as teammates. I uh, miss some of those locker room chats. Um, it's great to um, you know have you here as on the Western Bulldogs podcast. Um, Love seeing that clip the other day, and and uh, I think I think you are all of those things. Uh, the cult hero, maybe a touch misunderstood, iconic, certainly in our view. Um, but to us, mate, in our hearts and in our hymn books, you are Spindle Shanks. Uh, thank you, guys, and um, no doubt there'll be a great promo going up for this um, and plenty of highlights throughout this conversation. Uh, but, no, it's always good to, you know, you know think about memories and, um, you know, my life um, for eight years, it's kind of been shaped by what happened at, at the Whit Noble. So thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, make sure you send through that money to the BSB and account number I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a class.